Hey, this is Dan from Tiny Home Builders, and in this video, I'm gonna be designing a tiny house in SketchUp. So if you're new to SketchUp or you're looking to modify a set of plans in SketchUp, then this video is definitely for you. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start up uh, SketchUp, and we have here where we get a choice of creating a new model. And really the choice here is, uh, is it gonna be inches or meters? That's the big thing here. And because we're in the US and we're on Imperial, it's gonna be in inches. So I click on that. All right, and then we get our model open and it gives us a simple set of tools. This is called the, the tool toolbar up here. And these are a bunch of different tools that it gives you, but this is a little bit, this isn't quite all the tools I'm gonna need. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into toolbars, view toolbars. I'm gonna disable the getting started toolbar and start the large or, or select large tool set. And you can see here, it took away the smaller tool set that's up at the top and it gave us this, this bigger tool set that's off to the left-hand side. Let's go ahead and delete this, this lady, this model out of our, our plans. Now, the first thing that, when I first started using SketchUp, a big mistake that I made was I was trying to draw the entire house in one big lump, right? And uh, instead of drawing the ind individual components. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna select the rectangle tool here and I'm gonna go ahead and just draw a rectangle starting in the corner, starting in the center. I'm gonna start drawing a rectangle. And if you see here at the bottom right, there's the dimensions that show us how big it is. Uh, we could drag it to the dimensions that we want, but it's really kind of hard to get it exact. So um, it's sometimes just easier to put in, the, type in the dimensions. So I'm gonna type in 10 foot comma 20 foot, and it gives us a 10 by 20 square. All right, and then I'm gonna go up here to the pull tool, and then I'm gonna pull up this edge. And this just allows us to turn a two-dimensional object into a three-dimensional object or change the dimensions of a three-dimensional object. So I did this because this is how I, I tried to draw a house the first time I did it. I was like, okay, well here I've got a 10 by 20 house. Um, let me go ahead and you know draw some squares here for the windows and try to take those, you know using the push and pull tool, try to take those out and, and just, tried to do it in one fell swoop and it was just, it was not working. It, this, this is not the way to, to draw a model, to draw a tiny house. So then I came across someone else's model, uh, Michael Jansen, who runs Tiny House Design. He had some free models at the time that were out there and just seeing how he did it, where it was all the individual components, all the individual pieces of wood are individual pieces in the model, it suddenly made sense to me because then you can start peeling away the layers and and when you start creating plans you can actually see the wood and how the wood is going to lay it out because that's really what your plans are doing the plans are showing how your wood is going to be built into the house and if you don't draw the wood then that doesn't matter that doesn't matter so and this way of doing it is definitely not drawing the individual pieces of wood so this is not the way this is don't make the same mistake that i made all right so since we're drawing the wood, we need to start with a, you know, a piece of wood. That's gonna be our, our first thing we're gonna draw. So if I go here and just start again with the rectangle tool. Now this is, I'm gonna draw, this is not scripted. I don't have anything planned out for this, uh, for this model, but I'm gonna draw a 10 by 20. Uh, let's just start with a 10 by 20 house. And I'm gonna design it to be on a foundation, not on a trailer, because if I design it to be on a, on a trailer, it'll be a little bit more complicated because I'll have to deal with the wheel wells and the fenders. Whereas if I just design it for a foundation, it's a little bit easier. But so for this for this presentation or this this video, I'm just gonna keep it a little bit simpler. So I need to draw a rectangle to start my piece of wood. Now I wanna draw it standing up, but it won't let me do that. It won't let me snap to that. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw it this direction. I'm just gonna start with a random length. Uh, let's just say one foot. But then the width is what's important because I'm gonna start my foundation with two by eight pieces of wood. And a two by eight, despite its name, is really one and a, one and a half by seven and a quarter. So I'm gonna draw this little rectangle uh, one inch long by one and a half inches wide. Okay, so I've got my start of a piece of wood here. So this is, if I take my little tape measure here and I measure, I can confirm that that's one, that is indeed one and a half, and then I can measure from here and it is indeed one inch, or one foot, excuse me. So then I'm gonna take my push-pull tool again, right here, and I'm gonna pull this up to seven and a quarter, 7.25, typing that in so that I don't have to drag it and be as, um, as precise with my mouse, it gives me 7.25. So this is a section, a one-foot section of a one by eight. 
And this is something I'm gonna use uh, for, my, for my foundation and I'll use a couple of these. So we've got this, this one started. The thing I wanna do pretty early on is I wanna make this into a component. And a component in SketchUp is basically a way of naming, the names aren't really important, but it's a way of grouping a bunch of things together into, you know, and you can name it, uh, but it allows you to copy it and manipulate it as a group as opposed to just the individual um, parts of it. So like right now, this is not a component. So I can select the individual lines or I can select the individual panes, which gives you a lot of flexibility. But then when you start putting this in with a bunch of other different pieces of wood, and I just, let's say I just want to resize this one two by eight, I, it's really hard to do. It makes it really hard if it's not, if I can't just grab that one two by eight, I have to go in and start selecting all of the different pieces of the two by eight. Well, when it's here by itself, it's really easy. I can just select the whole thing. But when there's other pieces here, it's going to be really hard. So let's go ahead and cop, uh, select all of that. And all I'm doing is there's a pointer tool. I'm just highlighting everything. And then there's this make component button here. So I'm gonna make a component and pops up this little screen. And let's just say, uh, let's just call it subfloor joist. Again, the names don't really matter because I don't really look at them by the names. Okay, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and color this. So I'm gonna click the paint bucket thing, paint bucket tool, I'll come over here to my materials. Go to colors named. I just want to pick a tan. See if I can find a tan tan. Okay, so I'm just selecting tan here. They have they have you know a bunch of different patterns here that you can pick. Like you can pick wood, and you can make it look like a wood like wood. I, I find personally I find this a little bit distracting. So I'm just going to go back to colors. Oop, yeah, colors named tan. Okay. All right, so because it's a component and I colored one side, it went ahead and colored all of the all of the sides. If it's not a component and you click, uh, it'll just co color that pane. So that'll be that'll be it. Okay, so we've got our one foot section of our two by eight, which again is one and a half by seven and a quarter. So that's one foot. I want to make this house. I want to make this house twenty foot ten by twenty. So I'm gonna now when I click on this. If I try to expand it, it's giving me that little you cannot do button, right? That little little circle with the line slash to it because this component is sealed up. It's like it's all grouped together. And so that makes it really nice because that's actually something that you want because then if you have to move it, you're not accidentally resizing it as you're moving it and you're grabbing something. Uh, you have to be a little bit more deliberate when you want to change it. So when you want to change it, you double click on it and now suddenly you've, you've got these dotted lines around it. Now you're in edit mode of this individual component. So I'm gonna drag my push pull tool again and I'm gonna pull it out 19, I'm just gonna type in 19 feet and now I should have a 20 foot, a 20 foot piece of board here, all right? Which you can't actually buy, you know, you can actually buy this in 20 foot. So sometimes in the model we're, we're designing wood that you can't actually get. And then in reality, when you go to build it, you have to, you know, what's called scab boards together. So if, if you've got a, a length of a board that you can't buy, or may, you know, maybe it's not sold in your area at that length, then you take two smaller boards and you put them next to each other, butt them up against each other, and then you put a third board that kind of bridges the two and makes it, you know, joins them together. That, that small piece of wood is called a scab. Okay, so... I've got my wood, I've got my, now I'm gonna click out, you know, I'm still in edit mode, you can still see the dotted lines. I'm gonna click away from it, now I've got my wood. So if I grabbed it and I started moving around, you can see that it moves around. I did this, let's say by accident, so I'm gonna just hit the escape key and it puts it back where it undoes or lets go of my, my moving because I hadn't committed the move yet, it was still, still being moved. If I had accidentally clicked and moved it, I could just hit Control Z and probably go up here, undo. You could go up into the edit and click undo up here as well. Ah, I just accidentally did it. So hit the escape button. This is 20 feet long. I want this thing to be 10 feet wide. So I need another one of these at the other end. So I'm gonna to go ahead and take my tape measure tool. And tape measure, if you grab it on a line, if you start on a line, it will draw a line. Uh, if you start on a point, it draws a point. But So I'm gonna start on this line. And I'm gonna drag out, and you can see the dotted line starts to appear. I'm gonna drag, and I'm gonna type in 10 feet. All right, and that puts a line over here at 10 feet. 
I'm gonna do the same thing here, but I'm gonna do it at zero because I wanna find out this is the boundary of my subfloor that I'm gonna build. All right, so I'm clicking the my joist over here. I'm gonna hit Control C, Control V. I get a copy of it here. And now I want it to be in this corner, but where it start, where it grabbed me is in the bottom left corner, which is it never seems to grab, it never seems to start me in the right spot. So it'd be really hard for me to snap this to that, to that corner. So I have to just kind of drop it someplace and then grab it again. So I it automatically put me on, on this move tool, the move tool. So I'm gonna go back up and I'm gonna start in this corner and now it's moving it from that corner and I can just kind of hold it near this X or where the two dotted lines cross over and it will stop it right there. Okay. All right, so while I'm here, let me show you something kind of cool about components. Uh, these components, even though they're different pieces in the model, they are still the same component and so when you change one, you change the other. So if I double click on this one, puts it in edit mode, you can see that this one kind of is, you can't really tell because there's not other pieces, but this one is a different color than if there were other pieces on there. But if I go ahead and I start to change this, you can see how it's changing both of them. So that can be really useful. Like if you have a bunch of studs in your house, uh, in your model, and you wanna change the elevation or change the height of a wall, uh, you don't have to go in necessarily and change every single, every single stud. So I just went ahead and hit escape to get out of this. All right, now I need some, I need some joists here. So let me take one of these. Because the joists are going to be two by eights as well. So I'm going to control C, control V, put that here. And then I need these running this direction, right? I need them to be perpendicular to this rim joist. So there is, we've got the move tool. You can, say, you can see that the tools are kind of grouped together. Like these are the drawing tools. Uh, these are the moving tools. These are the measuring tools. So there's this one rotate tool. So I'm going to click on here. And then you click on a second part that you want to rotate around. And then I can type in 90, but this one actually snaps pretty well to 90. So if you can see on the bottom, it says angle 90. So boom, I just moved that one here. Or just rotated, I should say. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and move. I'll move it right here. Okay. So that, that's looking pretty good. But wait a minute, this piece is really long, right? We need this to be shorter. But... I just showed you that if I change the length of one, it's gonna change the length of all of them, which I could show you that again real quick. So zoom in. Oh, sorry, I used the tool without telling you. Uh, so I use this rotate orbit tool, and this allows me to orbit or rotate around the point that I'm grabbing. Okay, so I'm grabbing this and allows me to rotate around that point. And then I'm using my scroll wheel on my mouse to change the zoom level. All right, so if I go back to my clicker, I click on this piece of wood, and if I change it to be the right size, the right side up, oh, I'm changing all of them. That's not good. So I need to, I think I accidentally changed it a little bit more. Control Z. All right, let me just double check that this is still 20 feet because I want to make sure I didn't accidentally. So I'm just going to grab from the corner, to the corner. Yeah, it's still 20 feet. Okay. so. What I can do is to, so that this doesn't happen is I can make this component unique. So it'll still be a component, but it'll be its own component. So I'm gonna say make unique. So now it's its own thing. Didn't let me rename it. Uh, it does have a new name because it's a different component. So now when I resize this one, I'm gonna click on this little end here with the push pull tool. Now you can see that the other ones are not resizing. All right. So I'm gonna just click right here hover my mouse over this arrow right this point right here and then it has been resized all right so i need another one on this end so i just control i clicked it control c control v it automatically when you paste it automatically puts you in the move tool but i just dropped it here because it probably i didn't even pay attention it probably grabbed it allowed me to move it from the wrong point i want to put i want to move it from this point to this point so i'm going to hover over this point Hover over that point and they just snap together. All right, we're getting a subfloor. We're getting a subfloor. All right, so now we gotta put these on a, on a subfloor. The, the joists are typically 16 inches on center. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna control C, control V. And how I do this is I just put it where the one is and then I start to drag it in the direction that I want it. I type in 16 
and then I have it where I want it. All right, and then I just keep doing that. So I just, it's probably a more efficient way to do this, but. All right, so then I drag that over, type 16, control V, Sure, there's some some person that's super good at SketchUp who's cringing right now because this is such this is manual, but all right. But it's not that it's not that long. Oh, see, I accidentally started rotating it. I grabbed from the wrong spot. So if you if you look here, when you hover over this, if you hover over this little red line. It, it puts it into, the, it changes the tool into a rotate tool for you automatically, so you could turn it. So sometimes you accidentally do that. If you do that, it's not a big deal. You just hit Control Z or, or Escape. 16. All right, so one thing I'm gonna do, 16, just to speed this up, is instead of doing one at a time, I'm gonna do a bunch of them, so. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm holding down the shift button as I'm selecting and that's doing a multi-select. So I'm, or it's allowing me to select multiple things. So now when I do control C, control V, it gives me all of them. So, so now I'm gonna place, start in that corner, place it right on top of this one, move it over 16 inches. Let's see, do I need any more? Oh, it looks like I might need one more. Control C, control V. Almost there, ah, it wants to rotate again. I'm gonna hit escape, put it on this one, and then put it on 16. So this is this is not gonna be, this last one is not gonna be 16 inches apart. This is only one, well, it is, it is 16. Oh, it's not from the center. So from this side, one foot four to the edge. So this one's just a little bit smaller. The gap between these two is a little bit smaller than this one. Yeah, I don't want that. So uh, so I want from the edge, so normally you want it 16 inches on center, um, but from the edge to the first one, you want it to be 16 inches. So 16 inches from here to this edge. So it's over three quarters of an inch. So let me just go ahead and select all these. Let me actually do this. All right. So I just held select and then dragged so I could select multiples, uh, grab my little drag thing move it over and I'm gonna type in three quarters of an inch. All right, All right. so now from the edge, it's 16 inches to the center of the first board and then it's 16 inches the center of all the others. And the reason why, you know, if you've ever wondered why, you know, if you've heard 16 inches on center or 24 inches on center, when we put pieces of sheeting on here, which is gonna become real obvious here in a second, um, you need all the seams of the sheeting to lie on pieces of joists or studs. And so you, you know, 16 and 24, 48 inches, which is the size of a piece of um, plywood is divisible evenly by 16 and 24. So that's, that's why they select those sizes. So later on, when we have a piece of plywood on here that is, let's say 48 inches, you can see that that 48 inches is gonna land in the center of the joist. Or if we have one that we use the full length, which is, um, which is 96 inches, again, that, line, that, that, lands, that lands in the center of the joist so that the seam is on a joist. If the seam landed in the middle of between two joists, you would have like a little springboard in your house, which is, which is not what you want. Okay, so we've got our subfloor now. Um, I've got all these little measuring things, you know, all these little lines I made. I'm just gonna go out here and select them and just hit delete because I don't need them anymore and they're just gonna end up being a distraction if I left them all. If I left them all there for the whole time, that would be that would be a problem. It'd be distracting. So now we're gonna draw our pieces of sheeting. So start in the corner, and I'm gonna draw a rectangle, starting in this corner, drawing out this way. Uh, I can see. I'm, I don't remember. I never remember. Is the first dimension that you enter the this going in this direction or is it going in this direction? And so what I'll do is I'll just kind of drag one out really far to see which one's longer. So this one is three feet. So I know the first one I enter is gonna be in this direction. So I, I want that to be four feet, four feet comma eight feet, which is the size of a piece of plywood. And so we have the starting of our piece of plywood here. So this is our piece of plywood. 
We want to turn this into a component. So to turn it into a component, I need to select all of the pieces that all the individual pieces, which is this pane, this, this edge, this edge, that's a little bit of a pain. Before it wasn't a pain because we could just do that. We could just select it all because it was by itself. But now we've got other pieces in, in the mix. So what you can do is just go into the middle of the pane and double click and that selects the pane and all of the edges. All right. And we're gonna click, click uh, make a component. And that is going to be subfloor plywood. And then I'm going, so now this is a component. So now I got to double click on it to edit it. I'm going to drag this up. I'm going to drag it up to be three quarters of an inch. Now technically plywood, subfloor plywood is not exactly three quarters of an inch. It's 23, 30 seconds. Again, just to confuse you. Um, but we're going to go ahead for, just to keep it simple, we're going to make it three quarters of an inch. I'm going to color this wood as well, just to make it look kind of woodsy. I like, I like it looking woodsy. Um, okay. So now let's start, start moving, start adding pieces on here. So we're going to take this piece, select my pointer, take this piece, control C, control V, zoom in again. They, they put me on the wrong spot. So I'm going to take this top spot and put it on this top spot and we are good. All right, and then I need to control C, control V. I guess I already had it control C, so I could have just control V. But you can see right here how the plywood is landing on the seams. The seams of the plywood are landing on the joist, so that's what we want. Okay. And then we have now this piece of plywood overhanging the edge. And if I modify this piece of plywood, that's gonna be a bad thing because it's gonna modify all of these. So before I do that, I need to select make unique. This is now a unique component. I can double click on it and change it without changing all the others. I'm gonna take the push pull tool, push and pull it right there. And now we got it. All right. So now I can start on either end. I'm just gonna go ahead and start on this end. Uh, I do not want the seam of these boards to line up with the seams of these boards. So instead of just copying this piece and moving it over, which would have the seams line up, I'm gonna take a full eight foot piece And put it right there. Peace. And then the four foot piece. Oh, look at that. I can see the I can see the joist. So that tells me right there I accidentally put it too low. Um, it'll let you see if things are on the same pane, it'll let you see both lines, and so I can tell I, I put that too low. So let me rotate around. So I, I dropped it in just a little too low. So let me just grab my move tool and... Okay, so I'm continuing on. I had some technical difficulties which made my me lose a bunch of my recording, but I'm gonna just pick up from where we left off. All right, so I'm doing this next row of, of sheathing. Uh, I don't wanna copy these three pieces because then the seams will line up just like I didn't wanna copy these pieces from here, but I can copy these. So let me just shift and click on these. Copy this over, Control C, Control V. Grab that top corner, move it over here. All right, and so I don't want to resize these because it would then resize these. So I need to make them unique first. So when I make them unique, I can't, you know, the, these are these two are the same and this one's different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two that are the same and so that when I make them unique, they become unique together. In other words, they become a new component that's not these but they are, they will then become the same component. All right, so I'm gonna right click or click on these two with the shift clicking on them, right click and then say make unique and then zoom in and I'm gonna resize this one. And when you can see I resize this one, I'm resizing the second one too because I made them unique together, all right? So then click on the edge there and then now I need to make this one unique by itself, make unique. Zoom in on that, push pull, push pull that to the edge there. Okay. All right, so now we we have our subfloor done. All right, so it's time to start on on the walls. So the walls, the floor, we've we've done the floor, but we did that with a two by six, which was uh, or did, we did a two by eight. Two by eight, which was one and a half by seven and a quarter. So the walls are gonna be made with entirely by two by fours. So let me go ahead and I'll just go ahead and create a new two by four. So I'm gonna use the rectangle tool. 
I'm gonna go ahead and draw down here. Even though this isn't gonna be where it's at, I can't draw up here. It won't it won't draw on that that plane. I keep saying pain, but plane, because it's it wants to grab onto this one. So if I go down here, I'll just have to move it up later on, which is fine. So just like before, we're gonna go 1.5, comma, uh, 3.5. Now, if you don't put the inches or the foot, it just assumes inches, which is nice. But if you want foot, you have to specify foot. So I didn't have to put the little inch sign, the little double quote. I can just omit it altogether. But if I'm if I'm doing um, feet, I obviously have to put the feet in. All right. So enter that. I'm gonna double or I'm gonna yeah double click in here so I can select all of this stuff that I just added. Make component. Call that a uh, kick kick plate. So let me go ahead and move this up to where it's actually gonna be. I'm gonna double click on this. So I get the boxes around here. So I'm now in the edit mode for this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this and make it the full length. And then I wanna color it. But if I color it now, while I'm in edit mode, it's only gonna color the one, it's only gonna color the one side. So if I go outside of edit mode and then I color it, it colors the entire thing. All right, so that is my, that is my kick plate, my the stud, or excuse me, the two by four that's gonna be on the bottom of the walls. And then uh, I need to make a stud. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a new thing here, which is going to be 1.5 comma 3.5. And then double click on that, make it a component, call it a stud. And then how tall of a wall do we want? We want on this wall, I'm gonna I'm gonna go 12. Again, I'm not I'm not going off of any plans. I'm just kind of seeing what's gonna look good. And so uh, let's do. Um, I, I want to I want to have a 10 foot tall wall here, but I've got the one and a half inch kick plate and the one and a half inch top plate. Those two by four, the one two by four that I just made, that's gonna be three inches. So what if I want to have a 10 foot wall? I need to make the wall actually nine feet, or make the stud nine feet nine inches. And if that didn't make sense to you, I'll, it'll make sense in just a second. All right, so now I'm gonna color that. You're starting to see a lot of rep repetition here, I, I expect. Clicking on the kick plate, I'm gonna use the same thing for the top plate for now. I'll, I'll probably have to change that. I will have to change that when I decide to start, um, when I put a door opening in here because the kick plate will get cut. So uh, it'll be different, but for the time being, we can leave it here. All right, so I made this this stud nine feet, nine inches. This is one and a half inches. This is one and a half inches. So if we take our tape measure tool and I measure from the bottom here up to here, 10, 10 feet. So that's, our, that's why I uh, made it nine feet, nine inches. So the total, it would be 10 feet. Let's go ahead and from the edge of this wall, I'm gonna do my studs 24 inches on center. So I did my joist down here I did my joist 16 inches on center, but right now uh, the um, framing, advanced framing technique says that the wall should be 24 inches on center. You wanna have a mix of, you wanna make sure you have enough wood in your walls to where the wood, the, excuse me, the wall is structurally sound, but you also don't wanna have so much wood that you can't have as much insulation as possible. So right now the guidance is 24 inches on center, but because this is the first one, it's not from center to center, it's gonna be from the edge I'm gonna do 24 inches. And so that will be where the center of this new stud will go. Okay, and when we put the sheathing up, again, you'll see how the, why that's important, why that 24 inches on center is important because that's where the line, the, the sheathing edges are gonna be. All right, so I'm gonna put one, put one of these studs, I copied and pasted it, put it right on top of it, and now I'm just gonna move it down 24 inches. And then I'll do the same thing. Move it down 24 inches. All right, now, now once I get three, once I get three is when I usually start to like to copy and you know move on to more of them. 24 inches. Let's see. Move that down 24 inches. All right, and then I need one more. One more at the end. Control C, Control V. Okay. All 
All right, there we go. We got our wall. We got one wall. We're there. We're almost there. Can't quite live in this. Can't quite live in this thing yet. I'm gonna go ahead and select everything. Now, I, I mentioned this plus minus thing uh, on the um, on the mouse pointer. So the if you see on the mouse pointer, there's I'm holding down the shift key, so you're getting a little plus minus. And so that means that when I select one, uh, I can unselect it as I mentioned earlier. But um, I mentioned where I might want to do only the plus, which is when I hold the control key down. If I were to hold the plus and I said I the the uh, excuse me the shift key, some of these things get selected and then some of them get deselected because they are already selected. Well, this is where the shift key excuse me the control key comes in. Um, nice and convenient because then I can just keep highlighting things and only things get added on. All right, so there's my wall. I'm gonna control C, control V, copy the wall, put it here, and now I've got two walls. This wall is the same height, obviously, because I just copied it. I will ultimately make this wall shorter later on, but for now, we're just gonna leave it as is. All right, so now it's time to create a rafter. Now, a rafter, in this case, I'm gonna make the rafter, since this is not going on a trailer, I'm going to use a two by six as the rafter, and that will allow me to put the rafters at 24 inches on center, just like the walls. And I found that out by looking at a rafter span table. So there are resources online where you say, hey, this is what type of species of wood I'm gonna use, how big of a span am I gonna have, uh, how big of a piece of wood am I gonna have, and it will tell you how far apart the, the, um, the rafters can be. So I specifically looked for what's the minimum size I can get away with where I can make them 24 inches on center apart, 24 inches apart from each other. And, um, and that was a two by six. So that's what I'm gonna go with for this. If this was a 12 foot wide building, then I'd, I probably wouldn't be able to get away with a two by six. I'd have to go with a two by eight or I'd have to put the rafters closer together. But since, uh, since I'm going with a something that's 24 inches on center, the same as the studs, then I don't have to have a double top plate. I don't have to double up this top beam. I can just use a single beam and, um, and I can line everything up. All right, so let's go ahead and make the, uh, the two by six that I'm gonna use for, for the rafter. So I'm gonna use the rectangle tool again, starting in the corner. I'm going to enter the dimensions. So a two by six is 5.5 comma 1.5. So five and a half, one and a half. I'm going to take my arrow tool, double click in there, add a component, type in the word rafter. And then I am going to um, double click on that. So I go into edit mode and then I'm gonna drag this and I'm just gonna make it kind of long for now. I'm, I'm gonna trim it off later on. So I don't need to, I don't need to worry about how long it actually is. I'm, I'm just gonna um, make it extra long for now and then trim it later. All right, then color it just like I've colored everything else. All right, and now we want to put an angle at this uh, at this rafter. So, uh, because it's the roof is going to be an angle. So when I'm looking at roof angles, almost always I'm trying to use a standard a standard roof angle. And how roof pitches are or angles are defined is usually by uh, rise over run. So meaning how much does it rise or actually fall, depending on how you look at it, for every amount of run. And that run is always 12 inches. So when they talk about, when someone talks about roof pitches, it's always a 112 pitch or a 212 pitch or a 312 pitch and so on and so forth. And what that means is if I'm saying a 212 pitch, I'm saying it rises or falls, depending on which way you're looking at it, it rises two inches for every 12 inches. And for us, when we build tiny houses, 212 pitch just seems to work out really well. It looks good. It accommodates a lot of different roofing materials. Like you can only put certain roofing materials on certain pitches. And we like to use metal roofing and we can put our metal roofing on a 212 pitch. And so that's that's typically what we use. So I need to I need to put this this rafter at an angle and I can look up, I can I can Google what's a what's the angle of a 212 pitch, and I think it's like 9.08 degrees or something, and I can actually turn this to be 9.08 degrees. But the way I do it is I typically just make a little triangle. Um, so that I can just match it to that triangle so that it's exactly 212. Uh, so let's, let's just do that. So I'm gonna start in this corner up here. This is, I'm, I'm gonna, this is gonna be my pivot point for my angle. So I'm gonna draw a measurement from this, this line here to be 12 inches back, because again, it's 212. So 12 inches is my run, and then my rise is two inches. All right, so from this, if I drew a line, let's just draw a line. 
I draw a line from this point to this point, that is what I'm trying to make my rafter look like. And that is the nine, nine degrees or, or so. So I'm gonna use the pivot rotate tool. Uh, hold on, before I do that, I'm gonna select the item that I wanna rotate. I'm gonna select the rotate tool. I'm gonna go to this point right here. This is, oh, see how it's, see how it's one, it's popping blue. It wants to go on the, um, it wants to go on that axis but I want to keep it red. But every time I go up there, it turns to blue. So I'm going to stay down here, press and hold the shift key, and then go up there. All right, and then I'm going to click somewhere out here and then move to that intersection of my two lines. So now this angle looks like the line I just drew, right? That's a 212, that's the nine degree angle. All right, and now the rafter is really low, so I need to raise the rafter up. Now, when I raise the rafter up, I could, if I built like that, I could, I could technically build like that. I could build my roof like that. The problem with building a roof like this is that the roof is putting a lot of pressure on that one little point of the wall. And what that has the effect of doing is actually pushing the wall out. And we don't wanna push the wall out. We want, we want the weight of the roof to be pushing down on the walls, not pushing out on the walls. So we actually want to cut what's called a bird's mouth in here that will allow the rafter to sit directly on top of, on top of the wall. So I wanna move the rafter down a little bit. Grab here and move it down here. And then what I can do is double click on the rafter so that I can edit it. Draw my lines to mimic that, that cut or that, um, that top plate because since it's, it's not in this component, but the fact that I can still see it means I can still pop to it, snap to it. The, the tool will automatically snap to it. And then I'm gonna do the push pull and I'm gonna push this to where it just gets disappeared. So technically that's back here someplace, but I know as soon as I see the red lettering, it says offset limited to one, negative one and a half. Once you see the red lettering, it's now disappeared if you click. So I clicked and it's gone. That, that piece of that wood is officially gone. So if I were to take this, okay, let's click away from it so I'm not editing anymore. Click this and then if I moved it up, I'm gonna just move it right back, but you can see you can see um, now there's when I when I'm <laughs> when I move these things, it's like I, I forget that my head doesn't need to move. So sometimes I'm sitting here like moving my head around looking a little strange. So if you see that, you know, I mean, I am I am a little strange. But all right. So now we've got the roof coming down to here. So just real quick as a sanity check, this is the low side of your roof. Let's just see how much room we have underneath here because we're going to be living in this thing, presumably. So this is eight foot four, four and a half inches. That's pretty tall on the, on the low side. I mean, that's I'm six foot two, so I would have plenty of headroom. But one thing you might wanna consider is if you're gonna have a sleeping loft, then you wanna make sure that you still have plenty of room underneath there for your sleeping loft. And if you're not, then you may need to raise your roof a little bit. If you're building on a foundation, that's easy to do. But if you're building on a trailer, then you can't just raise your roof to unlimited because you've got a 13 and a half foot total Maximum, maximum that you can drive down the road. So you have to like kind of weigh a bunch of different things when you're doing that. All right, so let's shorten this wall uh, down. I'm going to grab this top plate, move that down. I'm gonna cut another bird's mouth here. Oop, what do I do? I'm gonna cut another, I'm gonna double click on this, make my two little lines here again. And then I've got my two little lines. I'm gonna grab my push pull tool, wait until the text turns red and then go ahead and click on that. And now that's gone. All right, so I've got my rafter here that's way too long on either end of it. So I wanna have an overhang. On the overhang, I'm gonna go with, you know, while I'm, while I'm here, before I continue on, let's fix these, these studs. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all these because they're bothering me that they're sticking up so high. And then I'm gonna right click on these and make, uh, make them unique. And now when I minimize one, because I made them all unique together, they all act the same way. And so that's my short wall. All right, and then, so I want this, I do want this to overhang some, just not this much. So I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a one foot overhang on the back. So let me just go ahead and draw a line 12 inches off the back. I'm gonna double click on my rafter and I'm gonna duplicate this rafter over and over, but I wanna make sure I get it as much done as possible just so that, um, I mean, once it's a component, so even if I did move it and I had to change it, it would still, it would still work. 
you know, it's still a change everywhere. But um, I like to get I like to get the you know the one done as best as I as accurate as possible before I start copying it over. Just in case I do have to make a change that's going to have more of an impact. Uh, okay, so this one I'm going to do an 18 inch uh, yeah an 18 inch overhang on this one. Again, I'm going to double click on the rafter, draw a line where I just where that 18 inch. Ooh, stay with me. Just draw a line where this 18 inches line o overlays it. Use the push pull tool, push that away, and now it's gone. Okay, so we've got our we've got our rafter here. Now we just need to duplicate this. These new these new rafters should line up exactly with the with the studs, since the rafters are going to be twenty four inches on center and the studs are going to be twenty four inches on center. So I can I'm going to go ahead and copy one of these. Control C, Control V. I'm going to lay it over here, and then I'm going to move it. Now I'm moving it along the red axis, and now I'm going to press and hold the Shift key so that it stays. So now as I move it, it stays on that axis, kind of like what we're doing with that rotate tool. So then I'm just going to click on the edge here because this is the edge of the rafter, the edge of the the two by four, the edge of the stud. Or I can click right there, or it'll it'll snap to it, and then I've got my new one. So Control C, Control V. Put it right here, move it along the red axis, press and hold the shift key. Hmm, that's not snapping anything, I don't like that. Okay, so let's move it again. Press and hold the shift key. All right, so that's one way to do it. I think I'm gonna just copy and I'm gonna overlay them the same way as, as I've been doing it the other way. So control C, control, or uh, copy, shift select, shift clicking on the two to get those two, control C, control V, copy those in there, put that there, go along the red axis, hit 24, and then now, now let's do four of them. That'll make it go a lot faster, control C, control V, grab this corner, uh, so sometimes it won't, sometimes it just doesn't want to pop and like snap to it. So I just have to select something some other place. So hit 24 and let's see where we're going. So if it, if it's, if it's not doing exactly what you want, I mean that it does happen for me too. Um, control, control V. Sometimes you just got to try it a slightly different way, which should be identical, but sometimes it just doesn't act identical. All right. I'm going to just delete, I've got two on top of each other, I'll delete this one on the end. Let's see. let's see, let's look at this. Yeah. All right, and then I've got to move this over. Okay. Okie dokie. So now we've got, we've got our roof. Look at that, it's starting to look like a house. If we're not careful, we're going to have a house here soon. All right, let me delete these. Again, making sure that I don't accidentally delete a component in the process. All right, so now this sidewall. So there's a couple different ways we could do the sidewall. We could do a square wall and then just fill in, fill in the little triangle that would leave be left open, or we could actually make the wall angled. Uh, obviously, the angled wall is going to be a little bit more difficult, but I, I, that's how I like to do it. I like to have the, the continuous wall. So let's let's do it that way. So I'm going to click this kick plate, control C, control V. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. So I'm clicking on the corner, clicking on the side, rotating it 90 degrees. And then I'm going to drag it, move it up over here. And now it's way too big because it's not meant for this wall. So what's going to happen if I resize it? It's going to mess up everything. So I have to make this unique and I can double click on that and then resize it. Okay, and then um, let's do a stud. I'm gonna start with the tall side. I mean, it's just, it, I can make any of them tall, so it doesn't really matter, but Control C, Control V. I'm gonna go ahead and make this one unique right off the bat because I don't wanna accidentally forget make unique. And then we gotta rotate it 90 degrees, so it can be on this wall. I'm going to type in 90, move it down here. All right. 
All right, and then we need it to be 24 inches on center, but 24 inches on center, the first one is from the edge. So edge here. See now, now it, this arrow is going off into Neverland. So I need it to, I need to move it around until I see it turn green. Because if it's green, it's on the right, it's on the right axis. It's on, you know, I'm trying to go this direction. If I type in 24 now, who knows where that 24 is gonna be. It's gonna land in the middle of the house. So I'm, I'm just trying to get it to where I can see it turn green. So then once I see it turn green, I know it's on the right, right place. So control C, control V, uh, but that goes to the center. All right, and then see this one is gonna be, no, it's not gonna be too short. But these are all gonna be unique because they're every single one of these is gonna be different. So I'm gonna just make them unique as I go along. Make unique. All right, control C, control V. Pop that in there. Drag that to be 24 inches. Control V. Oop, I didn't make it unique. 24 inches. Let me make it unique. Make it unique. Make it unique. Control V. 24. And these all have to be unique because they're all going to be at different height. You know, it's not like the straight wall. And then I need one at the end. There always has to be a stud at the end. So control V. And now see, it's, it's got me moving it from the wrong spot. So I can't, I can't snap it because it's, there's no place to snap it to. So I'm just going to drop it here, grab it again from the, the right corner, and then grab it here. All right, make that unique. Make unique. All right. And now we need a top plate. So... We're gonna take the pointer, grab this kick plate, control C. And so we need, just like we had on the other walls, we need a top plate. So let's see, what are we gonna do? We're gonna grab it by the correct corner. I don't know if I got the correct corner there. Nope, I didn't, but I'll just move it again. All right, so I need it right there. And now I need this top plate. Again, we could build it like this and just fill in this. This, this rafter would support that, so that's, that's fine. But I'm just going to put it at an angle and we're going to build the wall at an angle. It'd make it a little bit more difficult to build on the ground, but then you don't have to get up there and fill in all these little spots and it saves you a little bit of wood too. Uh, so we're going to rotate this up, grab this, grab this corner, make sure I'm on the red axis, grab this here, and then boom, pop it up in line with that. Now it's a little short here, so let me make it unique. Double click on it. I can't see this edge here, but I know it's there, so I can drag it out. And then I'm gonna draw a line here. I know this isn't quite matching up, so I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit. And then, all right, now I wanna go three and a half inches that way. So I'm gonna just type in three and a half. That should be gone. That should be, let's just, let's just spin around and check to make sure. Yeah, it's hard to tell because it would go in here, but I don't see anything. I don't. I don't see anything going beyond there. So I think that's. I think that's right. Okay, uh, let's go up to the top. I'm just using the drag tool, little hand that allows me to move up here. Up. Oh, this is too short. So let me. We're still in edit mode. You can still see the dotted lines around it. So I'm gonna pull this out. Draw my little line here push it. Again, I'm not getting the red text, so uh, I'm going to just have to push it to be three and a half inches because I know it's three and a half inches. There it is. So I dragged over here and I get the red text, negative three and a half. So if I were to type in three and a half, it would be the same thing. But uh, all right. And then we got to chop off all the tops of these, these studs. Three and a half. Chop off the top of this one. So just drawing a line. Chopping it off. Draw a line. Push, pull it away. Make it, nope, that didn't stick. All right, and then um, same here. And it's nice to draw, you know, ultimately you're gonna, you're not, you're not necessarily gonna have a stud at every 
24, I mean, you have to have a stud at every 24 or 16 inches on center, whatever you decide to do. But not all of them are gonna look like this. Some of them are, are gonna get cut because you're gonna have windows in there and stuff. But I like to just start with like pretending that I'm not gonna have any windows and it just gets me the, the structural part of it done. And then I come back and, and can make it, you know, add the windows and all that good stuff. All right, so now I got this wall done. Let's move, move back here. And now I'm just gonna, let me get rid of this dotted line here. Delete that. And then let me just copy this whole wall. Let me select all the pieces of this wall. I'm just gonna copy it and move it to the other end. Just holding shift while I'm selecting everything. Control C, Control V. Let me go over here and rotate around. What happened to my, what happened to my control V? All right, let me just rotate around and then I'll control V it over here. I don't know what happened to that one. I guess when you move in the middle of a control V, it abandons whatever you did. Okay, so now we have our box. Our box that no one can get in or out of, no one can look in or out of. I mean, once we put the sheathing up there. So, uh, so this is probably, you know, a good halfway point. Uh, and it's not taking t us too long, but we'll go ahead and uh, in the next video, I'll go ahead and put all the sheathing on there. We'll select where, you know, where we want the doors and windows. We'll go ahead and put those in and then we'll sheath this thing. And really that's it. That's it for the plans. Usually plans just take you up to that point. If you're designing this for yourself and you wanted to do some kind of layout work to see if, uh, if what you want is gonna fit in there, there are simpler tools to do that, like a floorplanner.com would let you let you design a floor plan and drop components into it really easily to figure out you know what size house you want to build. That's I would do that first rather than going through this entire exercise and then deciding, oh, I, I actually want it to be 22 foot by 10 foot. Uh, then you have a lot to change. So definitely get your size figured out before you start going down this path. But uh, but then, you know, if you still want to visualize it after you get here, just to be able to see what it's going to look like in 3D and be able to spin it around and all that good stuff, uh, then definitely you can you can drop some components in here. So, OK. All right. Till next time.